Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Adam here with Indy Farm Life. So today is the day. Very excited to get this process started. We've got the well driller on site. We have Wallace Well out of Greenfield, Indiana here. They're gonna be drilling a five inch well for us. And we're gonna be outfitting this well with a pump from RPS Solar Pumps. But it's gonna be a fantastic addition to the pond. Just spoke with these guys as they're getting started. They say they might take a couple days to drill this well. So that's based upon the well we have at the house, which is about 200 foot in depth. Hopefully we'll cap out at about 100 feet because after 100 foot you start paying by the foot. At the end of this video I will recap the cost of this well. I actually called about five or six well companies before we settle on Wallace Well, which is actually who also drilled the well for our house. And if you can see all the way over there we are still in desperate need of water. The overflow being just to the right of the dock needing about 18 inches of water or over 450,000 gallons. So I ultimately settled on putting the well here just to the left of this kind of gradual area entry point to the pond right about where the front of that truck's sitting i'd like to build some kind of hardscape with some rocks and a waterfall coming down i didn't want the wellhead to be in the way i have to bring in dirt to mound it up and then the solar array will live roughly in this area i've been studying the sun quite a bit by about 10 a.m at least now here in early july that tree is no longer shading this area and with that being due east as we're now past june the sun is going to start rising further and further south and we should have a great line of sight on this set of solar panels. We'll talk more about that as we get into setting the panels. And we have great sun all day long until we get to about 7 o'clock and we start getting clipped by that tree line there and a little here. But again, we'll talk about that more as we get to the panels. We're really curious to see where they end up on depth with this well. Again, the well at the house is 200 feet deep. And as I mentioned, we are going to be running 5-inch casing down into this well. The pump from RPS would fit in a 4-inch well, but me being a belt and suspenders kind of guy, I'd like to have a little bit bigger casing just in case we ever want to upgrade the pump and it's nice to have a little wiggle room. So we're going to use this as a learning opportunity, get a little education from Mike and Nick here as we start to drill this well. I saw a previous well drill for the house, but I am by no means an expert, so we'll learn a little bit here. So already learning a little bit from these guys, so on the pipe truck they got fresh water, pump the bin full, and then they got a recirculation pump here. And what Nick's doing here is adding a little bit of mud to the water, if you want to call it that, to help thicken things up. A little better consistency to work with. Looks like they're really close to being to the point where they need to change the first rod. Over and over and over. Quite the rig, but quite the process. Uh, they did drop a little barrier in here just past that bar to keep the silt from kind of coming back into the recirculation pump. Uh, did confirm with those guys that that is the kind of the stabilizer slash uh, boring head. That will stay on the whole time. The top piece will also stay on the whole time and they'll slip in driving rods between the two as they go deeper and deeper and i said mud earlier it's bent night which is what i thought it was going to be give you guys a shot here the drilling process and then we'll probably give it a break and check back in a little later when we have more progress as you can see as they continue to drill the amount of slurry that comes up and it's hard to be scooped out Burning through the rods here. On goes another one. So far they've not hit any impassable boulders like we found when we were digging the pond, so that's good. I did ask these guys, this, they only drill water, so they don't drill for gas. Maybe they'll find oil and we'll be set here, but only a water well driller here. Repetitive process. I had just asked Nick kind of a silly question as we're standing here chit-chatting was, how do you know how deep you are? You know, there's not a counter when they put those rods in the ground. Basically, it's even more simple than that. They know how many feet of pipe they have or rods here, and they just do quick math in reverse and figure out what's left. I've been standing here talking to these guys where they work. They continue to burn through the rods. Still haven't hit anything. Show stopping, so that's good. So a quick update here as the guys just stepped away for lunch. They are currently at 
140 feet deep on this well yet to hit any water so i'm not surprised i was hoping we'd have been under the 100 foot cap but again not surprised because of what the well at the house is up there close to 200 foot and my neighbors are something similar so hopefully in the next 50 feet or so we'll hit water uh, but for the time being kind of sitting here just waiting for them to drill a little bit more they may come back this afternoon if it doesn't rain but rain's in the forecast for this afternoon and tomorrow so it might be a day or two before we're looping back but we'll see i did make a joke with these guys that this is only a better business for them if that is actually producing concrete and they ended up telling me that they had a customer once who took that and spread it and then asked when the concrete was going to be setting up and i had to inform him that hey buddy that's that's just mud sorry about your driveway so here we are the next day and despite the crummy weather they're back on site going to continue drilling the well like I said, they're at 140 feet now, so we're going to let them do their thing, and we'll check back in with them when they're ready to start dropping the casing in and seeing what kind of flow rate we're getting out of this well. So I just popped back out here to check on these guys. I got the casing out. That's a good sign. They just took off for lunch, but I chatted with them briefly. They're at the bottom of the well. Any guesses? 187 feet. That's in line with the one at the house, and the ground doesn't change that much 400 feet apart. They said after lunch, they just have to clean it out a little bit, and then they'll start dropping all this casing in. Of course, we're out here having this well drilled for the pond and it just won't stop raining. So we'll catch back up with them this afternoon when they start dropping the casing. Uh, he did mention that they hit gravel at about 160 or so. So they've already been through about 20 feet, 25 feet of gravel. They have not tested it for flow. I'm anxious to see where that ends up. So just about ready to set the casing. You see they got the cap at the bottom and then the screen all the way up. So here it goes down 187 feet. We got 160 feet of pipe sitting here, so I'm going to have to pull one off the other truck. That is the bottom of the well, right there. That's what's going to be down in the very pit. So if you've never seen one before, now you have. These guys had to actually take a small saw and cut all these lines in this. I'm kidding. They just confirmed with them that they do the flow test after the casing is in. I guess you could then ask the question, well, what happens if you get down there and you don't have sufficient flow you pull the casing and redrill but my guess is that these guys have done this enough times that they know there's water down there obviously they're at the same depth as the house you see here too they got all of the pipes marked so that when they stick the bell end up there they have the right depth when it slides into the bell so up she goes they'll drop the male end into the female end Stick it down and repeat. I got another amateur question for you. So does the sand live inside the screen? You pour it down. So how'd you get the sand on the outside of it? Did you already pour it? The hole's big enough that you can put sand down around the outside of it. Got it. Over here learning a little bit of stuff. I just talked to these guys. As they do each joint, they are gluing it into the bell. So they gotta wait for it to set up a little bit. We were just chatting about the pipe. So this is a SDR 21, which has a 200 PSI rating. I asked the question if it was much different than schedule 40, because it feels pretty close. I think it's just difference in uh, PSI rating. I think they said schedule 40 might be 180, 120. And so as you can imagine, as they're doing this and you get five, six pieces down below grade, then you're gluing that one joint. You got all that weight hanging on there. So they, got, they have to wait for each joint to set up before they can press it down. Once they have all the casing in, they'll put this filter sand down around the outside of the casing. So that'll go down and kind of be packed around the outside of the screen. I'm not 100% sure what diameter of hole they actually drilled for this five inch casing, but they said there's enough room to be able to get that sand packed in down the hole on the outside of the casing. So that that'll live around the screen to filter the water as it goes through the sand into the screen and then up the well. This may be a whole lot more expensive than I planned on because I asked them if they charge more when the customer yaps their ear off and they said yes. So, so Murphy's Law, if something's going to go wrong, it can. I'm sure these guys are accustomed to it, but as they're dropping the casings in there, they got, I don't know, four or five pieces in there. Just hit an impasse. I think maybe a rock had kind of chipped out and fell in the middle. So now they got to pull all these casings back out and then rebore the hole, clean it out a little bit and start over. So start to see why the costs on these things add up. Obviously, it's not additional cost to me, but something they have to plan for with their time, wear and tear on the equipment, and everything that goes into drilling a well. 
already a little water in that pipe as they're cleaning them up there makes a heck of a mess so there is the final piece of casing after a lot of troubleshooting and headaches they got it in there a couple days later too we had some delays because of the weather and they had other jobs to go you know fix people's actual water for their house next step will be to get the sand the filter sand down there around the screen so they can do the water test do the water test and hopefully we'll see great results of the flow rate and then they will grout it and be done then we'll be getting the solar array set up out here in the pump from rps just put a threaded cap on top there and they're fitting now we're just pressing the screen down there a little further so that the casing is all the way at the bottom of the well now they're draining their pan getting ready to do everything here it's making a nice mess clean everything out of course as you're standing around killing time you got to make some dad jokes i was just telling them this looks like a frosty it's pretty appetizing quite honestly so they just finished pumping water down the well so like i said the water was going down the well out the screen and back up so kind of cleaning the outside of that screen now they're dropping all the sand in here and then they will be able to do their water test if you're having a well drilled be ready for a mess it does make a bit of a mess and you remember too we had this area that's low lying kind of north of the pond where water would always drain away which was not good because it wasn't going into the pond today that's paying dividends as all this garbage is not making its way into the pond that's a good sign all right we got water quite a bit of it. it's coming out of there looking pretty clean well we'll let this flow for a while and check back in Got her flowing real good now. Starting to clean up nicely. Been run for about 30 or 40 minutes. Let me tell you, you know it's good well water because it is cold. My goodness, that is cold water. It's going to be interesting to see what it does to the temperature of the pond as we start filling this thing up. I'm sure we'll see an initial drop in temperature, but over time it'll rebound pretty quick. That aerator turns that water quite a bit. Brings it to the sun. Mixing up and pumping grout. Almost done. Well, the well's almost done. At this point, I can't remember what I have said and haven't, but I asked him a question about how far the rod is down into their pumping right now. I think I think he said they're pumping at around about 80 foot depth is where that rod is. Again, that well is 187 foot deep. I think we're about 40 gallons a minute. Really excited to see where the static water level ends up. Once they pump that grout in there though, they're gonna be done other than clean up here. So we'll find out soon enough. So the well is now fully grouted, effectively ready to go. They're just cleaning up here a little bit. And then we're gonna check the static water level and see where that pans out. I'll still plan to talk to you guys about the cost of all this here at the end, but we'll figure out the static water level and then we'll do that. I'm not sure I knew that was even in there. Pull like a little sleeve outside the inside of that collar there. Just clean it up. They do have a cap on top of the well there keep stuff from falling down in there so as far as they're concerned they're pretty much done like i said go check that flow or static level but the well itself is ready to roll oh yeah Of course, as soon as you drill the well, it starts raining. Moment of truth. It's going to be oil. It's like 1,500 foot or something. 18, 18. It's not that deep, is it? 43. All right, I get both showcases, 45 feet. Thank you, boys. There they go. Job well done. To recap, 
This well is 186 feet deep. Static water level is about 45 foot and it's producing about 35, 40 gallons a minute. So how much did the well cost? Well, depending upon who we had to do it, it could have been the low end of 6,800 all the way up to $9,800. Given that this is no small expense, we wanted to call around and get a number of estimates and I have some data here to share with you. I actually called seven different places and I received return calls and estimates from six of them. Just so we were comparing apples to apples, these are all for five inch casings. And it's important to know how well drillers price their wells. All of them price them the same. There is a base fee for X number of feet, and then it's X number of dollars per foot beyond that. And both of those figures can vary greatly from one driller to the next. So of the six, three of them would drill to 100 feet before they start charging you extra per foot. I'm gonna wait for this airplane to pass. I feel like Kyle with Spicer Designs and his highway problem. So of the six, three of them will drill to 100 feet before they start charging you per foot. Two of them will drill to 85 feet, and one will drill to 80. And those base prices range from $4,500 in the low end to $5,500 in the high end. And then when you flip to the per foot price, those prices vary from $22 a foot up to $50 a foot. So as you can see, the cost can vary greatly, and you really have to take into consideration the depth of the well you think you're going to be drilling. For example, one driller may have the lowest cost at 115 feet, but as you chase it to 150 and beyond, they may become the more expensive option based upon their per foot price. In our case, the well is gonna come in at $7,408. And so how's that broken down? Well, they charge $5,000 for the first 100 feet. I went with one of the 100 foot caps, knowing that we're gonna be probably close to 200. And then their per foot price beyond 100 feet was $28. When you put that into the calculator, I built in Excel because who doesn't love Excel? They came out to be the second cheapest as compared to the cheapest option below that at 6,800. Why did I pick them? Well, lots of dad jokes here. I knew what I was gonna get. They did the house, they're very professional, they're local. Sometimes it's worth paying a little extra to be confident you know what you're getting. Why are there so many bugs here today? I hope that's not on the camera. And the flip side of that coin is why pay $7,800, $7,900, $9,800 for a hole in the ground when I know the one I'm gonna get is gonna be good. So my advice, if you're out there looking to do a project like this and you don't currently have a well ready to go to fill your pond, call around. Also, try to see if you can look at well records, which are most of the time public, and figure out the average depth of well in your area. If it's 100 feet, maybe it's best to just find one of those drillers that drill to 100 feet and save yourself a few extra bucks. Knowledge is power. And so as we're out here early this morning, there sits the well. And you can see, as I talked about putting the solar array right about here, it's about 9.15 in the morning. You can see we're starting to get sun in this area. We'll see what happens, but long term that sycamore tree may not make it. I have to take him out. So I spoke with RPS earlier this week, gave them the specs of the well, and the model that's gonna be coming to us is the Pro 750V. I previously mentioned it was the Pro 750M. Given the output of the well, we're gonna go with the V model, which stands for volume, to try to pump a few more gallons per minute into this pond. I also mistakenly highlighted that we were gonna have 16 solar panels running this pump. That's actually inaccurate. It's only gonna be 10. 16 is the maximum number that the ground unit can hold. So we'll have an even smaller footprint of solar panels out here. All of that is currently on its way to us here in Indiana. Could not be more excited for that to show up. So the next video you're gonna see in this series is going to be us installing the scalable ground mount and mounting the solar panels. And then we'll drop the well pump in in a later video. So please do hit that subscribe button and come back and check out the rest of this process. Guys, it's gonna be awesome. I can't tell you how much I've sat out here and dreamed about this thing being full. And if you own a pond, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Not having it be full can be one of the most frustrating things ever. And I won't add insult to injury, Adam, hometown acres, but I am looking at you. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time. So in full, the water line will be roughly here. That is a lot of water.